Season's greetings, all you nerds with words out there. That's right. It is the last episode of 2021 that we are doing. This is the last issue of 2021. That's right. The next time you see us, we're going to have that big old 2 0 tail tail. So it is your favorite <laughs> nerds with words, the Triple S crew themselves. It is me, Sundance Kid himself, aka DJ. It's me, Slick Vic. And it's me, a God damn it! <laughs> See, Victor, what the fuck? You fucked up. It's me, aka. Yeah, I was processing Victor's fuck up, and that's why I couldn't say my name. I said it's me, aka me. I promise, guys, in 2022, uh, DJ Victor and Vince, aka Sundance Slick Vic and Space Case, will figure this out. Okay, I don't know. See, see how easy that is. But no, no, we can't do it. Anyways, on this issue, we decided to go big or go home so uh i don't know whose week it is but why don't you break it down for us uh tech I, technically it's victor's week uh, yeah. i think oh, we all just unanimously agree on this one yeah we all kind of picked on it but i'll 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 introduce what we're talking about yeah dude this honest, oh, wait, here do the introduction and i'll do my spiel go ahead yeah sorry go ahead so this week we're talking about the spectacular the amazing the brand new marvel movie that came out that's sweeping the nation spider-man no way home vince take it over it feels so uh full circle for me i don't know maybe you guys too but no spoilers so, no wait. not only spoiler not just talking warning. Spoiler warning. Yeah, I was gonna say spoiler oh, warning. The, spoiler the, warning. Spoilers. <laughs> so much spoilers. If you haven't watched No Way Home, this whole episode is spoilers. So the sorry, whole, yeah. but not Duh. sorry. Duh. It's a given. Um, yeah, this feels full circle for me. So not only are we ending the season today, season three, season finale. Um, not only are we ending the year right now. Um, but yeah, like how did all of this happen all at once? I don't understand. And we get a big. <laughs> season finale of a topic which everyone's been waiting for and it's spider-man no way home so all mm -hmm. three of them coming together merry mm -hmm. christmas this mm -hmm. is awesome i'm glad that this is our christmas end of year episode uh there's so much to unpack so i'm gonna shut up and let you guys take over vic this is your week so how do you want to begin to unravel this this monster of a movie by talking about uh, no spo or, uh, spoilers, but no spoilers if you haven't watched, if you uh, if you know people that haven't watched it, just don't talk about it. And I'm saying this with mm -hmm. full fucking experience because one of my friends gave me the hookup and I watched it a day or so earlier than most. Then it actually premiered on Thursday. So did someone spoil something for you? No, I had to not spoil it for everyone in my house. Oh. You guys like I was like. You know when, like, yeah, you put a you. treat in front of a dog and, like, don't get that? I'm just sitting there, like, like shaking, like, every cell in my body, trying not to say shit. Mm -hmm. But um, watching it, like, I don't know. It was it was amazing, dude. Like, it's 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 the topic of everyone's conversation this weekend. I can tell you that. I, wor I work at the mall. Every other conversation you hear is, like, have you seen it? No. Okay, cool. That, like, in passing. So uh, we're going to yeah. open this up quickly with... The first five minutes, sorry, first five or six minutes. Um, let's talk about the big reveal that everyone did. I did not see it coming. Um, Charlie Cox, Charlie Cox, man. This, I, I keep telling people how stupid I feel for not seeing this coming because we have a pretty strong rumor that he's in the movie. Uh, we have confirmation that Charlie Cox has uh, agreed to continue to play Daredevil, that he's most likely in Spider-Man No Way Home. And then in the movie itself, they're talking about, we need a lawyer. We need a lawyer. I've got a great lawyer. Who's a lawyer? Charlie Cox, a.k.a. Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil. And all of a sudden, bam, he's on the screen. And the way they do it, it's just a cut. And he his face is like the screen. I was sitting next to Victor and I just yelled out Cox on accident. And then I realized it's a family movie. Someone said, shut the fuck up. So I just went back to my popcorn after that. But that was goddamn, awesome. Charlie Cox back in the MCU and he's reprising Daredevil. I'm, I'm hyped on it, man. You could have said Charlie. <laughs> I could have, but for some reason I decided to yell out Cox, which Cox! I like his last name for the record. Um, it was a wonderful, like, in the one, it, it, it was the same reaction from the one I watched to this one, to the screening with Vince. 
And it was just awesome seeing that. And especially even seeing that, like, yes, he is the, he is the meta human version of who we, the, he is daredevil. Like seeing that one scene, just the fucking brick and you see him catch it before Peter does. And Peter's like, how'd you do that? And he's like, I'm a good lawyer. I'm a good lawyer. I'm just like, yeah. Oh shit. All right. What did you think about it? Mr. Mr. DJ. Um, awesome. I I remember watching the trailer for Daredevil before it came out, and I remember watching it a lot the first season, and the second season, and the third season, and Defenders, and uh, uh, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones, and, and watching all those series on Netflix. So to see him on the big screen, and <laughs> yeah. hopefully seeing that like he might be able to come back as in the MCU because mm-hmm. there's some other stuff from Daredevil that was revealed for another show that we won't talk about because spoilers yeah. but um, I just think it's really cool that they there was so much fan service in this movie and this yeah. was one of those times because everybody knows how close Spider-Man like Peter Parker and Matt Burdock are because they're kind of on the ground heroes that protect their boroughs in their respective boroughs in New York. So to see that and to see that they gave a shit enough to include him for all of two minutes in this movie. Yeah. That's fucking beautiful, dude. It's so it's like thank you guys. Thank you to who made this movie. Because that was one of those moments where I was like, you guys get it. You'll uh, you'll definitely see the theme for this movie. The reason why it was so good, I think it was a combination of fan service. It wasn't like mm-hmm. they 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 made this movie for people who've only they didn't make this for like oh we have to explain who these other people are. Uh, it's like no, you guys know this. Like we, the director was like you have to know this. If you don't, well you're not going to really get it. But everyone else is going to enjoy it. Every drop. Uh, it's this movie was like on par with me. I think it's the best Marvel movie next to infinity war. It's better than Endgame for me. And we'll go into why, but, um, um, let's see. There's so much in package. Uh, Vince, you got any highlights of the thing that you want to talk about before we get, we try to get some sort of structure here. I know. Right. It's like, where do we even begin? Um, I guess let's just take it step by step with all the big reveals and the big plot points. So obviously the beginning Spider-Man, uh, his identity is revealed. Mm -hmm. hedgehog He's just taking um, good notes don't worry about it his head his his hedgehog is revealed <laughs> <laughs> um so it's the fur it picks up exactly where uh uh far from home left off which i thought was really cool uh right in the middle of Times square where jay jonah is revealing that uh spider-man is peter parker um I, I like that i liked the daredevil plug matt murdoch introduced um I know the reaction I'm about to get, so I'm taking this slow. I did not like the movie until the penthouse scene. So what? Everything with Doctor Strange and the bridge scene. Um, I'm sorry, but I was not a fan of the movie for a little bit in the theater, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a spicy take. So you just—I uh, know I also know I'm not alone because I've heard I've heard some other people kind of agree um, that it it wasn't really maybe not the best Marvel movie ever, but I will say the fan service alone, I appreciate the heck out of it. <clears throat> um, and after a certain pivotal point, which we'll get into later, um, it, it was just tough for me to uh, to really buy. Um, I will, I'll, I'll kind of break it down for you guys. So Alfred Molina wasn't really there for me as Doc Ock. The, the Oscar winning actor. <laughs> I, which I know, I know, which is maybe knowing that I had really high expectations of him. I thought he was so corny as a villain and the fight scene with him <laughs> was just awkward. Um, I think he did way better in the original uh, well, not the original, well, the one with uh, Toby. Yeah. His fight scenes, his acting, I I don't know, man. They just they weren't there for me. They were awkward. His the lines and his delivery, they were kind of corny. The music with the fight scenes was like, like, 
kind of corny. I don't know, man. <laughs> and then to top it off, like the lady, the the administrator lady on the bridge starts beating him with the purse, and he's like just taking it like a like a cartoon supervillain. I don't know, dude. It wasn't there for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's a it's a, it's a good hot take. I get it. You're fucking wrong, but it's a good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought we're already spoiling. Uh, yeah, so there's a part where he has to go, uh, kind of talk to the administrator to get them because they, uh, spoiler again, they all kind of got denied for their college applications because they're all high risk, like high risk, like they're going to bring some shit to their school. They're like, yeah, you're friends with the dude that's like fought aliens. Like we're not accepting you. Like really cool. You applied. So he goes and he tries to talk to one of the administrators on the bridge. And that's after Dr. Strange's spell kind of fucked up where he was able to contain it, but it kind of did mess up a bit. Let me, and, let me stop real quick. Came out. I'm assuming that anyone watching this has watched yeah. the movie itself. I don't think we necessarily have to like explain point for point um how did you feel up how'd you feel about the bridge scene how'd you feel about doc ock's performance let's he was was beautiful like honestly you gotta think about it too like all the actors in there they're all all the actors that played the villains in the movie which was really weird uh they're all oscar nominated oscar oscar or oscar winning actors they've all they're all very method with their stuff um I thought the fights were beautiful. It, it was very reminiscent of uh, the amazing Spider-Man for me, like the comics watching that Doc Ock fight scene where just seeing where it's like Peter has to dodge these like straight up, like super crushing tendrils. And it was, I thought that fight was pretty cool. And then the follow up into uh, Harry or uh, yeah, the um, Osborne coming in. I thought it was amazing. I thought, I thought Doc Ock did it for me. Um, I felt he had a great redemption arc in that whole movie. That's my opinion. David? I mean, my thoughts on just the like the bridge scene? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I thought it was a nice, fun, and campy way. Like, you obviously don't want it to start on such big, like, a uh, big building blocks like a real boss fight and stuff like that you want something campy and and kind of short and get the point across that hey these guys have entered our dimension and now we have to stop them and i think to its point vince is saying all the right stuff but that fed into that was what it was supposed to do like that fight was supposed to be campy and it was supposed to be cliche and you know alfred molina the Oscar award winning actor was supposed to look like a chump because he got taken down by a 17 year old kid. And keep in mind, this is the same actor that played a villain that went up against Toby's Spider-Man. Yeah. So, you know, he was no joke, but it's cool that like the movie sets that expectation that, Hey, the big boss that you saw uh, 14 years ago, yeah, he's not going to do the same stuff that you think he's going to do in this movie. Yeah. So it kind of, they kind of, kept us on our toes and and made us believe one thing and think another this whole movie is about misdirect so the yep. bridge scene was a definitely big scene to be like hey what you think is going to happen is not going to happen in the way that you think you might have the end game in your head but how we get there it's not going to be the way that you think we're going to get there so it was cool that they set that expectation right away and with one of the fan favorites no less in, in doc mm-hmm. ock and having that sneak peek at the green Goblin. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that sneak peek moving forward with the Green Goblin was definitely something that caught my attention. Um, I have zero negative things to say about the writing um, in the entire movie, including the bridge scene. I completely get that you need some sort of inciting incident to kind of set things off, um, which is, you know, what they did with Doc Ock. And I definitely don't disagree there. Um so moving forward in the film, uh, we start getting other villains thrown in, such as uh, Lizard, Sandman, um, Electro, um, and obviously Green Goblin, but that's a little later. Um, what do you guys think of between um, Lizard, Sandman, a.k.a. What, uh, Sam, what's his name again? I'm sorry, Sam Flint. 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 Oh, pff, what the fuck? Flint. Uh, yeah. Between, let's just go with Sandman, uh, Electro, 
or Lizard, bringing them back, who were you guys most excited that they brought back? Um, I think I was most excited that they brought back uh, Electro, just because I've always been a fan of Jamie Foxx, but Electro, I feel like, got kind of the half treatment in Amazing Spider-Man 2. And with this one, you kind of see a fully realized for all of them, for all of the Sinister Six, but like most specifically him, just because they they gave him like some tragic backstory and yada, yada, yada. But I mean, in this one, he's kind of got a, a little bit more swagger to him. Like mm -hmm. it, it really feels like he fits into the Spider-Man Rogue Gallery. Yeah. And uh, I, th I thought it was really cool seeing him with like the... <laughs> when he turns on his powers, you kind of see the, the like outline of the star that yeah. was from the original uh, Electro's yeah. uh, costume. So I thought mm -hmm. that was really cool. And again, perfect mix of fan service, make, making it look cool and like catering mm -hmm. to, to the story. Like it's just so cool, man. So mm -hmm. like Electro is probably the bat, the dopest villain in all of them. It's one of my favorites for sure. Absolutely. What about you, mm -hmm. Victor? Um, so <laughs> you took my pick, but I'll go with my second. Um, yeah, I, I actually love Jamie Foxx a lot. I was watching uh, Django Unchained last night because I knew we were talking about this. And I'm like, damn, I really want to watch a Jamie Foxx movie. Uh, so I watched that one. Uh, but besides that, I loved seeing the return of uh, Dr. Octopus because um, he was... Uh, to watch him get the MCU treatment that he deserved, watch him get that like subtle nods to where um, in the whole second movie, it was always kind of hinted. But in this one, it was good to see that like he wasn't a bad guy. No, it was that the fact that like it's like you're you're having four people talk to you at the same time. So watching him convey that, watching him kind of get that like grow as a character i will say one thing i did miss is the practical arms that they used for the movie for uh the second one because <laughs> they used practical arms practical effects for the original yeah. movie mm -hmm. um and uh they were talking about he was talking about filming and he said that he it was kind of difficult for him to not act with something there because like what they did was like kind of have him on a rig and he kind of moved around and he's like yeah i remember when they had to kind of have these things where i had to walk and act with it mm -hmm. but beyond that i i love that character and honorable mention i loved seeing sandman in the movie freaking too like flint like it was weird not seeing the actor but flint like he was the comedic bad guy <laughs> next to jamie fox's like more cool bad guy he was the funny bad guy talking about when they were talking about how they got their powers <laughs> they were just like yeah gotta watch out where you fall into shit because they both mm -hmm. fall into something but yeah that, those are my that was my villain yeah i uh i think i'm i'm more with dj here um it was it was cool seeing everyone come back to be honest um but electro was just just spot on uh, there were again the fan service with the the subtle giving him a mask uh with the electricity that was super cool i almost didn't notice it until victor nudged me and pointed it out and then i saw it again i was like whoa okay that's really cool um and then um jamie fox alone man like so jamie fox in the amazing spider-man trilogy was pretty good electro um it was never anything where I was like, man, Jamie Foxx is Electro. Like that was, that was badass. He did such a great job. It was just like, okay, yeah, I, uh, that, that's cool. Yeah. He, he, he was there, you know, he was, he was Electro, but <laughs> in no way home, he almost stole the show for me. Like Jamie Foxx, I don't know what he did in his time off here, but this man came back on the Spider-Man set, Spider-Man universe, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he pulled a Michael B. Jordan, like he just straight up embodied the role of Electro. Had so much stealing from stealing from DJ. He had so much swag about his character, and just does his own thing with Electro. He doesn't like the only thing he pulls in from the comics is the the story of Electro, um, just his character itself. There's nothing about the way electro is in the comics that is anything jamie fox like jamie fox takes this character and creates a whole different take on him and i thought that was just amazing because it's it's one thing to be like okay in the comics um iron man super smart super cocky 
Uh, he is truly a hero deep down inside uh, and then has has a huge heart. And for Robert Downey to adapt that and just play that role. But for uh, for Sam, or who the fuck is Sam? For uh, uh, Jamie Foxx to hop into Electro and just completely create this man, this character, amazing. He, he almost stole the show from me. But Agreed. the person that played the best villain Probably, maybe this is up for debate in the Marvel Universe. Uh, Willem Dafoe, man, coming back as Green Goblin. What do you guys think about him coming back? Do you think there's a chance for him to come back again? And just your overall thoughts on Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin in this one. No, oh, DJ. I mean, I think they could bring back an iteration of the Green Goblin or maybe the Hobgoblin, but I think uh, William Defoe is kind of one and done there. Um, I would love to see a Hobgoblin, Green Goblin type of deal for like Tom Holland Spider Man. Um, I think it was just so cool seeing him back, like using the iconic voice and. Uh, kind of, kind of again more fan service and and just seeing him on the glider and everything in the suit it was just so cool man it was it was being 11 years old again and watching the the spider-man movies like when you're a kid and i just thought that was very cool and it was very reminiscent of those times um but i don't think we're gonna see william defoe as goblin again but i think somebody will take the role on that'll hopefully you know sign one of those long figure deals with the mcu and you know we'll see him or her and in, in uh this iteration of like the goblin and mm-hmm. we'll see how peter tom holland's peter handles it yeah mm-hmm. um i think he did an amazing job and i do agree that i don't they're not going to bring him back because it's one and done he, he came back and he wanted to do everything himself but he uh he said it was very grueling um it, I agree with DJ too. It was like being 11. It was actually more so being like eight when you watched the TV show because I was like fucking Kevin Feige in the costume fucking department because slowly but surely his homeless man outfit, the purple hoodie and purple sweatpants started getting torn up in the fight with Peter. And literally that is the goblins look like his torn up everything with you see the undertones of the green. I'm like, I'm like, whoever's at Marvel was just like, we need to make it look different. Throw this hoodie shit on him. He's like, you're fucking brilliant, Fred. You're fucking brilliant. <laughs> and um, it was interesting because um, Willem Dafoe did slay it. Like he was, dude, he he was, a show, he was a scene stealer to the point where like you even see that he was kind of the quote unquote, like he is that evil linchpin in the, in the Sinister Six where all of them, they were like, okay with being like, they wanted to be normal again. Like you see, like Flint was like, I want to go back home. Max was like, it's fine. I, I want to go home too. They were all like on that point where they're like, wait, it's time to go. And you see, he's just like, why? He's like, why do gods have to, why do gods have to ask? We don't have to ask shit. We're, we are powerful. And then watching him have that monologue when he's fighting Peter, like, dude, I was like, dude, this guy is stealing every scene, like every scene with these people. He is just fucking knocking it out of the park. I was but they're not going to pull it. I really hope they bring Ned becomes Hobgoblin. If that's anything, if anyone hears me, bro, I hope that's like the inevitable because that would be the funny little, you know, he is going to MIT. He is going to like the school that uh, Harry Peter went to. Mm -hmm. He might, he might be like, I I have an idea of making this cool like machine thing. So I don't know. Big shoes to fill if that's the case. mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, dude, Willem Dafoe, um, his, his Green Goblin got even better. He killed it in the um, Tobey Maguire series, but he, again, like, he just honed in on this one and refined it and made it even better. Um, not that anyone even doubts his performance in the slightest, but just consider the fact that when you have any sort of character that's playing someone with a mask, you take on both doing regular acting as well as voice acting because it's very rare that you're filming and you have some sort of mask or helmet or anything on and they're pulling audio from you right then and there. 
most of the time you film, you do your lines, then you go back to a studio and you do what's called ADR and you record your lines as if you're voice acting. For William Defoe to absolutely kill both of those things is just, it just shows his uh, dynamic of an actor and what he's capable of. Definitely on par, uh, on the same level as like Mark Hamill playing the Joker. Um, not, I mean, that is exactly what I was getting because there's scenes where you only hear Green Goblin, you only hear Defoe's voice. And immediately I was like, dude, that's like Joker-esque, creepy um his laugh his uh, laugh the <laughs> the like growl in his in his speech um there have been a lot of marvel villains throughout all these movies we've been watching through the years no one has portrayed a villain as good as willem dafoe as green goblin i think he takes the cake for me uh josh brolin as thanos did a really good job at just being kind of someone who uh his presence alone strikes fear in you. You know that he is capable of doing terrible things. Um, there are other villains that have that same kind of demeanor behind them, but to have the full package of being uh, just creepy, truly villainous, uh, kind of sickly in the head mm -hmm. and unpredictable all in one, I think you know william defoe wrapped that up for us and put it in a character as we know as green goblin and it was just my my favorite performance by far in the marvel universe <clears throat> um speaking of terrible things and speaking of green goblin the next huge bombshell in the movie is a character death um this one was tough because <laughs> this person um and character has become a mother figure to Peter throughout the whole series so far. Um, outside of Marvel, her acting alone is just iconic, and a lot of people uh, know Marissa Tomei for a lot of iconic things, my cousin Vinny being one of them. Um, but yeah, man, so you guys, you guys know already what I'm talking about. So uh, Aunt May, unfortunately, gets killed by Green Goblin. And for me, this is the pivotal point where it becomes uh, the, the whole tone of the movie switches and it just gets amped up. And um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? How, how did you feel aside from the obviously uh, sad <laughs> emotion behind her death? But what did you think about this moment? What did it really uh, what did it say to you as far as the, the story itself? Uh, thank you, DJ. Uh, so I can I can guess we're all the same way. Where it feels like a lot of these characters, and it sounds nerdy. I will say this: um, my buddy David uh, from work just watched it, said 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 a similar uh, sentiment, and I it kind of put it in perspective. Like we we get to know these fictional people, and it sucks because like we they feel like family members. So watching Aunt May die, watching her fucking uh, uh, Tomei, like she does such a great performance. Watching her pass, like dude, it was. It was rough, but from a, like a writing standpoint, I agree with you. Where that was like that, it was the linchpin for the inevitable finale of the movie. It was it was a very necessary death. It was a very necessary part of evil and a part of the Spider-Man story. Because we'll get into it why, but like, dude, in that movie theater, you can just look around for a second. The one that me and Vince were at, you could look around, and everyone was just like doing that wide eye, like. Don't like cry, trying cry, not to cry. wasn't taylor crying yes when wasn't taylor crying in some movie <laughs> <laughs> but she was crying and it, that was the, the, the i it was a beautiful scene and we got to hear one of the most iconic lines but i won't take a i already taken too much just revealing that um maybe dj will talk about the line uh what did you think mr dj you know it was probably one of the most pivotal scenes in the entire movie and i think it was because we never got to see the the tragic like push that uncle ben's death gives peter and we kind of it's kind of just briefly mentioned on screen and you know we kind of don't really get that same presence that uncle ben always gives in like every iteration of spider-man where you know with great 
power, there must also come great responsibility. And we never got that because it's been done so many times, like with the last two. And so when we do, I think because we've gotten so attached to May throughout like the, the first two movies and now this, um, her death is such a big impact on Peter because when we see it, it or when he reacts it's just like a little kid dude it's just like a kid that just wants like the last piece of his family to be alive mm -hmm. and that was rough watching and and it it was just like fuck bro like this kid's got the world on his shoulders and he just lost the one person that like keeps him grounded and i feel like that kind of when she said the quote of great responsibility uh it landed and it stuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's a story behind it now. We get it. And it's from AMA and you know, it's important. So the stakes are higher from that point for Peter and, and the rest of the Spidey crew and, and seeing that. So it definitely sets the the stage for the eventual cascade that like the the last half of the movie brings. So I thought that was brilliant, dude. Such so good. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so with her death comes I honestly it, it kind of sucks she's not gonna be in any of the other movies because I really liked her as Aunt May. Um it it's like she died in real life. <laughs> like we're not gonna see her in the movies, right? Anymore. Like sucks. We're, we're never gonna see Marissa Tomei again. <laughs> yeah, at least she's never gonna be in any other movie again. Um yeah, it is unfortunate that we do lose her in the movie. Um but just like you said, so her death kind of ties in um, Peter's arc to the same arc we've seen them do with Toby Spider-Man and um, Andrew Spider-Man. Yep. Um, and what better way to tie that all together by bringing back the other two original Spider-Man and the number two Spider-Man, um, Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Um, we it's been rumored for months there's been set photos leaked and all sorts of speculation on this and we knew it was coming but somehow it was still extremely exciting to see them back on the screen and portraying their role as spider-man again um who were you most excited to see come back was it andrew or was it toby victor toby uh that's the one that i grew up with that's who the that's that's the spider-man that i've always like enjoyed i could watch all those movies plus i'm a very big sam raimi fan so I, I love what he did with the character and watching him come back it was like that moment that you're just like oh like <laughs> like i don't know how else to describe it i felt like a kid just in the movies just watching like you saw i was next to you and i watched mm -hmm. the movie before so i'm watching it again for the second time and i had the same reaction where i'm just like i punched my goddamn knees because i was so happy when they when they came on screen and seeing him come through, seeing seeing that version of Peter like have his life together. <laughs> I'm shit. sitting here thinking. So if you've ever been to a movie with Victor, he does this thing where he gets excited and his foot starts shaking like crazy, starts tapping it's, his foot because he's anticipating right. something coming up. Knowing he already saw the movie, him doing that was just like being in that scene in the penthouse where, where Peter's got his spider senses tingling and you don't know what's coming, but you know, something's coming. So him tapping his foot, I was like, what, what's happening? What's about? To <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I was it, like, it built the, the, it hyped it up even more. I was like, something really cool is about to happen or something really sad is about to happen. Cause he's anticipating it. Yeah. That was, that, <laughs> that, that was the, the quintessential part for the movie. That's when like all of our theories and all of our, like speculations came through and I was so happy it did. Cause like, I feel like Toby McGuire, Toby McGuire didn't get that justice in the last movie, this third movie. So it was really wonderful seeing that and seeing them act together. was just God awful, beautiful. Uh, DJ, what was your Spider-Man moment? Who's the Spider-Man you were ready for? Toby, obviously. Uh, that's, that's my boy. <laughs> so, I mean, I just thought it was so cool that I, again, I felt like a little kid 
like when they were opening up the the portals to them, <laughs> I automatically knew the first one was Andrew. Like I knew right away. You I was saw like, his big ass head. That's why. No, nah, he, he was way too. <laughs> he was way too friendly. Like Toby, Toby's, Toby Spider Man would never. And um, I think when they, I think when they revealed Toby, I was just like, holy shit! Like you know. Like for months, I figured I knew, like in my heart, I knew they were gonna have these two in there. But yep. until you see them on screen, you're just like, "Oh shit!" Like I can't fucking believe this is happening. That's a Spider-Man from every decade of my life that I've yep. seen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> two, 2012, 2020, this is, <laughs> yeah, 2021. Sure. This is so yeah. ridiculously cool, and. I just got so nostalgic. I, I honestly, I got really, there was a lot of moments I got choked up in this movie, mm -hmm. but that was one of them. And I think it was just because I was like, as sad as it sounds, I was like, holy shit, I've been alive for this many Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but it was so cool, dude. It was like, damn, y'all really do fan service well. Yeah. Like, and they got John Watts, the original director for Homecoming. Like, I was just like, y'all really yeah. stuck by it everything in this movie so that was one of those times where i was again just like kudos to you guys that everybody that was involved on this project because that was one of those moments yeah, it was, that was cool. absolutely it was really cool to see all of them uh in a scene together just the dynamic of the three different variations it's like brothers spider-man they kind of were like brothers yeah, yeah, yeah. Brothers. we're skipping over this this is really important to me what Vince, who are you happy to see? Which Spider-Man? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was your favorite Spider-Man? Oh, between back? Andrew and Toby, I yeah. definitely was more excited to see Toby. Um, I feel like Andrew always gets the boot. Like Andrew was a really good <laughs> yeah. Spider -Man, but <laughs> okay. He okay. just, I don't know, Toby. It's hard to compete with Toby and Tom. Yeah. Um, it, it's so. iconic. Toby is iconic as well. Mm -hmm. Toby is iconic because he was the first to do it. Andrew did it in a different way, and Tom is taking his own spin on it as well. Um, but yeah, I was more excited to see um, Toby. I love when they open the portal and they're just like, that's ah, just some guy because he's not in his suit and they think yeah. he's just some random dude. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> are you going to fight as a cool youth pastor? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> are you gonna put your suit on, or are you gonna go as a cool youth pastor? Um, great, man. Or when they're in the lab and uh, what Zendaya calls for Tom, yeah. and they all answer. Or they all. Yeah. I'm sorry for Peter, and they all answer. Yeah. Like, or no, it was um, it was oh, Ned yeah, yeah. who, who called, yeah. and he's like, uh, Peter Parker. Yeah. He's he's like, we're all look, yeah, we're all Peter, we're all Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. God. I think oh, so many. Cool. It was a cool dynamic seeing the three of them together. It was just like the older brother and then the middle brother. And they all exuded like those typical energies. Like mm -hmm. Toby's Spider-Man was just like, ah, we're over the hill. Let's just do this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like. Right, he's <laughs> back and stuff. Yeah. And then Andrew's <laughs> old man energy, dude. And that... then Andrew's Spider-Man was just like middle child. Super excited that like yeah. he found like these two brothers and everything. Mm -hmm. Like he's super excited about everything. The yeah. I love you bit that he does yeah. is fucking hilarious. Th thank you. Like, they were all thank you. No, I think <laughs> so the nice. best the best interaction with all three of them. There's two. The one about the web shooters. Yep. When they were just like, "What are those?" Like, does it come out friends? of any other? No. When he's like, and it's the meme. Yeah. It's literally the meme that they're like, "I wonder how they're how he's gonna explain." It. Like, that comes out of you. It's like, yeah. What about you guys? And then uh, when they were talking about the bad guys that they fought, that was so. I was like, "This is clutch." Oh, sorry. I'll the bad guys they fought. Fun. That was the that was pretty funny to me. Um, where Andrew's like, "Yeah, I fought a guy in a rhino tin suit." I'm yeah. lame. He was like, "Hold on, let's stop that. You're not lame, okay? You're amazing." He was just like, "Thank you. I need to hear that." It was just so fun, like just Tom, seeing them uh, all together. Uh, Tom Spider Man trying to explain Thanos and the whole Avengers thing. Yeah, they have uh, no idea who that is or what he's even talking about. So, I was an Avenger. Brother energy. That's great. Is that like the Avengers? Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. It, it was just so cool to see them interact, and, and it just felt even if the stakes were super high, when those three were together on the screen, it felt so goofy and just mm -hmm. fun. And I think because Holland Garfield 
and mcguire are just fun individuals yeah. so they just probably had so much fun together doing this and imagine being tom holland and doing your scenes with those two yeah <laughs> like yeah, that like, is so dope dude mm -hmm. that, those are the guys that paved the road for you like yeah. Tom mcguire paved the road for you and like you're just there and it's cool and it's so i don't think a lot they looked like they were having fun the acting right? in between it was so like oh my god I, I was watching the movie and i was like this this is beautiful like i'm watching the whole thing oh man like they geez. they did it so well and i wouldn't mm -hmm. i mean come on man marvel and disney they don't miss ever it's i don't understand who they have working for them but if they, you're gonna bring someone back especially after this long and not make it corny or anything like that this is the way you do it to mm -hmm. bring them back with the understanding that they're most likely never going to return again that this is a one and only type thing and for it to make sense in the, this this story like different universes opened up yeah. and this is the only way this is happening so for it to make sense uh, it this is the way you do it it was um, so executed well yeah. absolutely moving forward unless you guys got anything else you want to say um we know at this point in time that tom holland has agreed to three more spider-man movies which <laughs> that's kind of crazy moving forward what happens to the franchise what types of story arcs do you think we're going to get that what kind of story arcs do you hope to get um where does spider-man go from here i think we get the uh, i just want to say i think we get maybe everybody obviously remembering peter parker uh hopefully we get some more spider-centric stories like spider geddon or um you know uh, we could see venom craven you know there's still so many untapped resources for spider-man's like rogue gallery that we haven't seen uh, complete map out but i think we'll see more of the supernatural side with morbius coming out and blade and you know all, you know all of these supporting kind of uh anti-heroes villains uh, mm -hmm. of spider-man's universe so i think we're gonna see all those kind of slowly sleep uh seep into spider-man's universe um i just want to say the coolest thing that i've ever seen in my entire life was seeing peter parker alone <laughs> as depressing as it was and like him in like a shitty little apartment and studying for his GED when we all know the kid is supposed to be an MIT mm -hmm. and this is totally Peter Parker and and mm -hmm. then seeing him make the new suit from when he was what 15 in the original 14 or 15 in the original and yeah. he made that busted ass suit and then we see the the classic red and blue a uh, Spider-Man suit that was, was like, inspired, uh, obviously, yeah. by him hanging out with uh, Spider-Man one, Peter Parker one and two, and um, I just thought that was the perfect ending to like this arc. So there's so many more things they've tied everything up in a in a big, beautiful bow as far as this arc for Peter Parker or Spider-Man. So they could really go anywhere with the story now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just excited to see what ideas they come up with and, and how we're going to get MJ and Ned to remember who Peter Parker is. And I think that would be a really cool arc to see. Yeah, me too. Because this was uh, when this ended, the director said this is officially the end of what he called the high school trilogy. And we forget a lot of times because Tom Holland's in such a great performance as the high school Peter Parker. Like a lot of Spider-Man's pivotal stories happen when he's in college. Like it's going to happen. Like he's going to go to, he's not going to go to MIT obviously, but he's going to go, you know, he's going to go to New York community college or something like that. And like, I'm so excited just to see that. Cause during those college years, that's when he should have, uh, he should meet some of the biggest rogues he deals with. So originally um, it was, he would have met Kurt Connors. He would have met Dr. Connors. So it's kind of cool. Like just seeing that um, I will say it was so cool seeing that inspiration moment where he took, where uh, what DJ was talking about with the suit. I was actually telling uh, Vinny about that where um, that was a really important part and everything was foreshadowed from the very beginning of the movie by Dr. Strange, where he was just like, your problem is, you're trying to live two lives. So it's going to be cool seeing those spider centric stories. And hopefully we get to see freaking black cat. He meets black cat in college. Like 
a master thief that's a superhuman. Like, I would love to see that because he's going to need another love interest. And that is his other love interest for a while when he's in college. Felicity then, Hardy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Felicity Hardy. So it'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely going to piggyback off that because I was thinking the same thing. Um, so I think moving forward, he we explore his college life, obviously, wherever that may be. Um, there's definitely going to be another love interest, whether it's Felicity um, uh, Black Cat, rather, yeah. or... Um, uh, Zendaya as MJ. I think MJ kind of takes the back seat. It becomes like kind of a love triangle thing for a little bit. I would love to see MJ get some sort of Spidey powers eventually and become Spider Woman. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a thing because um, Spider Woman isn't Mary Jane. It's it's somebody else. Who is Spider Woman? It's Spider Woman is their kid. Is their daughter? Yeah. So it's like way down the road, right? Yeah. So. I don't know how they're going to spin it. They could put Zendaya as Spider-Woman because she's such a huge actress at this point. Um, But more than likely, they're going to either plug in a Gwen or they're going to go the Black Cat route. Um, Which Ned is up in the air for me. I don't know if he is going to forever just be a best friend, if he's going to hang out with Doctor Strange and become a sorcerer, or if he's eventually going to become Hobgoblin. Um. We know there's a Vulture series coming out with Michael Keaton, so we know eventually that'll get tied in. So we're so Vulture is bound to come back. Um, I don't know, man. There's so many things that are up in the air, so many possibilities. The only thing that I have a firm prediction on that I'll stick with is um, there's six total Spider-Man movies that will be completed when this is all said and done. Yep. Six reminds me of another thing Spider-Man related, which is the Sinister Six. I think the finale of this whole thing with Tom Holland after the six movies are done will be the Sinister Six, and they're going to tie everything in together. They did so. a cool, like, I agree. That's a big p- potential. They did a cool thing uh, because they only had five members of the Sinister Six in the whole movie. Well, and they, like cured a lot of them so i don't know if we'll even get the same i I don't think um uh jake jillenhall i don't think he's gone i think it was an illusion i think Mm -hmm. he'll be back um they did do like a a neat little nod so they knew like hey we know we're missing a member was when they were doing the dimensional riffs and you see the members that would have been that could have been there so you see from rhino to craven the hunter to the chameleon to uh Mm -hmm. scorpion like you see them literally like kind of trying to walk forward they did right. like a cool thing, but it would be cool to see those villains. Maybe that that was a neat little foreshadow for that, where it's like one of them. I would love to see that uh, Tom Holland's universe equivalent of the Rhino. That would be neat. The Rhino, I've always been a big fan of that villain because he's so simple. It's a simple bad guy. It's like, hey, I'm like ridiculously strong. And once I start going in a direction, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> I would love to see that. I... I don't know. This movie has so much freaking potential. Even the end credit scene. We're, we're like missing that. Where I had to like look at Vince and I'm like, there's end credits. And watching people leave the theater and I'm just like, you fucking you rookies. rookies. Yeah, I was like, you fucking rookies. The first one, right? Um, yeah. That one was good. Yeah, Venom. I mean, that's got to be where they're going with this. Venom. At least for number four mm-hmm. is, is Spider-Man and Venom. Um. Do you think Tom Hardy will be Venom? No. Or do you think someone else is Venom? Because Tom Hardy went back to where he belongs, but the symbiote stayed behind. No, I don't think it's going to be him. DJ, what do you think? I don't think it's going to be him. Um, I think he's a little older in the tooth, dude. Like, you yeah, have somebody a little bit younger, a little bit more relatable. Hopefully somebody is, uh, that Peter's working with at the Daily Bugle. Yeah. And, um, you know, Ooh. obviously an Eddie Brock type. Uh, along those lines or maybe uh like doppelganger uh eddie brock in in this dimension so like obviously they can use somebody other than tom hardy he's a little bit older so i don't think he's signing on for like another three movies the equivalency of like a decade so yeah you might not want to do I completely that. forgot about the whole photographer aspect of peter parker tom holland has had zero uh I have that prediction. Sure development on that on that aspect. Do you think they'll go ahead and have him start pulling into that storyline and maybe start working at the Daily Bugle? So that 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 has to happen because yeah. um, what is it? Jay Jonah, 
Like he has a, it's not that he's nuts and hates Spider-Man. Like there's a genuine reason why he doesn't like Spider-Man. And it's just cause he, it's like, he's a firm supporter of like the law, the law systems that exist. And, he th- and like, it's always been that like these people that have existed above the law don't have very much accountability. So I think he's going to be introduced. He, they have to do that, that storyline where like, dude, he doesn't have a job. And then Jay Jonah is the man who's like, I want footage of Spider-Man. It's going to be like, I can get you footage of Spider-Man. He's like, how? He's like, I'm a really good photographer. And just like, literally, like, I feel like that's going to happen. And you're going to have this building relationship of uh, J.K. Mm -hmm. Simmons, you know, J. Jonah Jameson, like with Peter Parker. And then you're going to like, you're going to see, I want to see that. And then at some point, I think David's right where it's, you're going to see like another photographer there being like, how are you getting these photos? It's going to be like, it's going to be Eddie Brock. That world's Eddie Brock. Like, how are you doing all this? Like, I don't get it. So yeah, sorry. (laughs) Somebody better than Topher Grace, please. Uh, honorable mention to the one villain that didn't make it into that movie. <laughs> Damn. Well, guys, we ended here. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, once again, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, David, this is kind of your jam. I'll let you take us out. Well, all you beautiful cats and kittens. Uh, thanks. For I thought you were about to say all you beautiful bitches. All you beautiful bitches and hoes. I uh, just want to thank you all for, for listening and watching. Um, you know, we do appreciate the support and really appreciate you guys. And we hope uh, from the Triple S crew ourselves that you are having a wonderful holiday with your family and friends. Um, from us, it's me, Sundance Kid himself, a.k.a. DJ. It's me, Slick the Spectacular Vic. And it's me, Vince, aka Space Case, which has been said in reverse on accident on purpose. We'll um, never get it. It's once okay. again, guys, thanks for watching. Merry mm-hmm. Christmas. Happy mm-hmm. holidays. Merry Kwanzaa. Hanukkah. Whatever. Oh, happy barbecuing. Happy, happy holidays, guys. Happy hunting. Happy, holidays, happy camping. Happy girls, this. Happy that. Else. We'll see you guys next season uh, in episode guys. 60. So, see you know, guys. whatever you're doing, we'll.